Hey there, friends and viewers. Welcome to... I don't know what to call this. I'm going to do a run-through of Shadow Fang Keep on my hunter. Meet my hunter, Neanderthal. My first character. I named him that both because uh, the translation of the Greek word means something that is actually significant to me. And I don't know, I was a kid when I came up with the name, so you know, so I thought cavemen were funny. Is there a problem? Anyways, uh, I don't I don't typically play my hunter that much anymore. I feel like uh, they just kind of got boring after a while. But once they started adding focus and changing the mechanics and cataclysm, I got really <coughs> I got really interested in spec again. And so I leveled my hunter pretty quickly. But as you can probably tell by my numbers, um, I'm wearing very crappy gear. We're talking like questing gear here. I actually, this is my first heroic I've ever done on this tune at level 85 because I literally just reached the item level uh, in order to enter heroics just minutes ago. So I got lucky with a Q apparently. Anyways, guys, so I was reading through the comments on the state of the channel address that I, that Curtis and I did just yesterday, and uh, I asked you guys for feedback, and so. The Hunter was, by my calculations, the most desirable spec for uh, s some videos. Now, we do have a fair amount of it up on the channel already, but that is... Uh, those are all low-level content. I, I don't think I've seen any level-capped Hunter stuff on this channel. And so my viewers uh, from my channel are getting kind of upset with me. They're like, I'm where's the feral PvP? Because that's what I'm known for for most, most of the part. Uh, and you guys, listen up, all right? I always told everybody that, whoa, my pet is about to die. Wow, this tank blows. God. I always said from the beginning that I am not trying to make my channel feral, feral PvP, etc. So I always wanted to put up tons of tons of gaming stuff, regardless. Doesn't even have to be WoW. So that's what this is about, guys. Uh, if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be doing other classes, and that is that. Now let me just take a minute to explain what's going on here. I'm spec Beast Mastery now. This is a PVE spec that I'm using. This rogue is going to die, and my pet shortly after him yet again. My God. Are you freaking kidding me? So, these, uh, the Beast Mastery spec. Look at this. Look at these morons. They're leaving the tank. Just, God, I hate that guy. <sighs> really, really making me angry. I tend to get very frustrated in dungeons, guys, because newer players, they really get on my nerves sometimes. Not in PvP, because I get to kill the new players in PvP, but in dungeons, I have to work with them. And I'm not good at doing that, so I apologize if I outburst a little bit here. Uh, anyways, the spec, Beast Mastery, is very dependent on the pet. Now, uh, that's pretty obvious, seeing as how you are the master of a beast. And no, I'm not talking about myself. <laughs> um, basically, about 40-50% to 50 of your damage should be coming from your pet. Now, a lot of people look down on the Hunter spec, and it has this reputation of being a noob class. And a lot of that comes from the stigma attached to it, because... There's some kind of a bug going on here. Because a, l a large portion of the damage does come from a pet, which is essentially an NPC. But, they're looking at it all wrong. Think about it. The pet is a melee NPC. That's a non-player computer that does damage on the targets that you select. Now, what about that is different than a regular damage over time effect? In fact, it's quite a bit more advanced than a regular DOT because, I think this got DC'd, because you actually uh, have to manage your pet's abilities and your pet does uh, attacks that you manage, such as kill commands. So in, in reality, it's actually quite a bit more complicated in that regard. Uh, as someone who plays classes that are heavy on dots, the Feral Druid, the Balanced Druid, Fire Mage, Shadow Priest, I can tell you that managing a pet 
is a lot more difficult than just applying and reapplying damage over time effects, such as Living Bomb, for example. So that is not a justification for why the Hunter spec is a newbie spec, because it's just simply not true. In fact, the hotkeys, look at my secondary action bar here, the hotkeys that I have set up for my Hunter tend to require more concentration than even a Feral Druid, and Feral Druid has the reputation of being the most difficult spec to play in the game. I'm not saying the Hunter is more difficult than a Feral, I'm just saying that there's a lot to the class that is, uh, is respectable, and the skill cap for a Hunter is very high, in fact a lot higher than a lot of other classes in the game, so that's just my little spiel standing up for all the Hunters in the world. I strayed away from it originally because it's just not my style PvP wise to be kiting and running away from people and feign deathing, uh, but it is very fun to do and a lot of newer players are attracted to hunters because they have this idea in their head that by having a pet it's like their companion, like a companion, almost like a multiplayer kind of a thing and it's just attractive to a, com uh, to a player that may not be entirely comfortable with a new MMO or something of the sorts. I know that for a fact that's why I started as a hunter because I'd, I barely even played PC games before I started playing WoW. <sighs> but anyways guys, as I was saying about the Beast Mastery spec, the hunter, for all intents and purposes, is worthless without his pet, if you respect Beast Mastery. And to an extent, uh, that's true for Marksman and Survival as well. You saw my pet die a couple times there, that's two reasons. The tank is terrible. Whoa, almost shot that boss. The tank is terrible, the one that left, and I also am not specced into this Heart of the Phoenix, which is a must-have if you're a beginner and you don't know how to keep your pet alive. I also had my Growl active because I was questing just moments ago. And so always make sure that's turned off when you're in a dungeon. You may even turn on the Cower to uh, to reduce AoE damage and such that you may be taking from your pet. But for, if you're a Beastmaster, your number one priority after doing damage is keeping your pet alive. That is absolutely essential, because if you don't, you're going to be doing dam terrible damage. And I mean, not like uh, Chris Metzen, or not Chris Metzen, what's his name? It's StarCraft 2. Uh, right. Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. The terrible, terrible damage. I mean that in a literal sense. You'll be doing a very low damage. Um, I'm going to wait for this guy to crowd control, and then I'm going to blow some cooldowns on him. You saw me use... Uh, Bestial Wrath right there. Bestial Wrath is essential as well to do strong damage. Wow. Just a ton of damage. But essentially, guys, if your pet is dead, your primary source of damage, which is something called Kill Command, is not usable. And as a result, your rotation is going to be painfully straightforward and do very low damage. My Serpent Sting just fell off there, my mistake. Um, trying to do this while concentrating on commentary is not easy because I don't play a whole lot of Hunter these days. But I have to say that the Beast Mastery spec certainly is the easiest rotation of the three, hands down. That's not to say that it's not, uh, it doesn't take concentration, because I used to raid a ton of my Hunter um, back in the days of Naxxramas, when Wrath of Lich King just came out. And I was doing top damage in my guild. This is back when, like, 4,000 DPS was amazing. And, uh, I was doing real strong damage, top of my guild, and... I was a uh, marksman spec, which at the time was almost exclusive. What the hell? <sighs> marksman at the time was almost exclusively a PvP spec, but I did it anyway because there were just too many people playing Beast Mastery. In fact, everyone was playing Beast Mastery. So uh, I'm just kind of an individual like that. I don't like to play specs that are really, really common. Uh, and when they do get super common, I like to do the other specs. So Beast Mastery right now is certainly the least popular, I would say. Oh. Wow. I'm being strangulated by that boss from the entrance. That is absurd. I don't even know how the tank died there. I'm getting really frustrated with this group. So uh, once again, if I outburst, I'm sorry. Are we safe now? Thank you. Let me see this tank's gear. So I don't really know how I want to approach um, these sorts of episodes. I know Rurikon does a fair amount of these, and just straight up, guys, I don't want to. I don't want to be stepping on anybody's toes or any of that. I don't. I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to take the light away from Rurikon or any of that because I do like his work and uh, you know 
my understanding is he started the the dungeon stuff on TGN. It's not something I'm entirely interested in. It's more along the lines of I have a hunter. He's mega ungeared, undergeared, uh, and going into a battleground with zero resilience is not only very frustrating, but it's not fun to watch. So uh, I, I, I saw the comments from yesterday. I'm just like, okay, they want some hunter stuff. I'm going to do one of these. No problem. Um, I don't even remember what the hell I was talking about. But anyways, guys, right now the three hunter specs are uh, very, I would say, similar in terms of damage output on a raid boss. That's a standstill fight. Survival was super high uh, in patch 4.03, which is the patch before the live one. So much so that it was just dominant over the other two specs. There was really no competition in terms of the damage uh, in PvE and PvP. But now they're pretty darn similar, and I'm happy to see that. And I've always liked the Beast Mastery spec, so that's why I'm playing it, but I'm kind of a marksman at heart. The reason I'm doing Beast Mastery right now is because I'm just getting back into it, like I said, and I don't want to be uh, messing up too much. I think this healer is totally overhealing. I remember what I was talking about with these dungeon episode things. I want to try to find the balance between talking about the class and talking about the fights, because personally, I don't know these fights very well. I haven't been doing dungeons, um, but I, I know the basics of it. So I will tend to talk more about the class than the dungeon itself, just because that's my approach to it. Uh, but in the future, or maybe right now, you guys, leave me some feedback below uh, what what you think I should be talking about in these sorts of in these sorts of episodes. But for right now, I'm just going to do what I just said. Um, may I make a couple recommendations to Blizzard if they ever happen to stumble across one of these videos? Uh, kill command needs to be taken off of the global cooldown because it's a pet ability. And it's just frustrating having to, to use one of your globals on an attack that isn't, you know, fired by your hunter. Similar to the way they've been switching around the as the uh, aspects. Is that my turn? I don't even have an aspect active right now. No one of my damage is so low I didn't have aspect of the hawk up. In uh, any, any dungeon fight, really, guys, you want to keep aspect of the hawk up at all times. Some people I see running around with aspect of the fox in movement fights, but the reality is... If you, I don't know what the term is, but if you stutter walk or, you know, you stop to fire off your your cobra shots uh, in movement fights, that's going to increase your damage more than it would otherwise if you're uh, not getting the fort or the 2600 attack power from Aspect of the Hawk and instead shooting your shots while on the move. Uh, I haven't I haven't done a whole lot of testing on it, but it's pretty easy to tell based on my experience and. At 85, if that is the case, you do want to be using Aspect of the Hawk the entire time. Unless it's some super kiting fight, you know, where you have to be moving most of the time. Then you might consider using Fox. But even so, I'd be skeptical about it. So, you can see I, uh... I do, uh, try to use my Beastial Wrath whenever it's off cooldown. The pet is always going to be attacking, for the most part, on a stationary target like this, so it's never a waste to use Bestial Wrath, um, but at the same time you don't want to be using it when you don't have procs up and all that, so I'm just trying to find the balance between using it within about a minute 20 every time and not wasting it. Wow, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so I'm about to die here. Yeah, what the hell. Somehow the healer died yet again. And the tank has to deal 315,000 damage before this spirit dissipates. Not gonna happen. What is this ability he's doing? What is this? He's like pulsating, like a, almost like a hellfire. Lay on your hands, man. Come on. You used your bubble? Get out of here. Yeah, so Lay on Hands actually triggers forbearance these days. Uh, so whenever you use your bubble, it excludes you from using Lay on Hands. Come on, Arkstar, you can do this, man. How is he healing so much? What the heck? He's using Judgment of, uh, what is it, Light? Or Seal of Insight. As opposed to uh, Seal of Vengeance, because everyone's dead. So smart maneuver there by that tank. Swell job. Um, mostly his class, but 
you know. <laughs> Damage on that fight was uh, pretty decent. You can see my... I didn't have Aspect of the Hawk for the up for the first half of it. You can see Arcane Shot doing about 30% damage. Oh, Kill Command's not on here. I don't know why Recount does that. My pet um, doing about 40% of his damage with Kill Command, so that's probably about 25% of my character's damage. Uh, overall, guys, as I've been saying, if your pet dies, fuck this. Uh, if your pet dies, it's game over, you know, like, as soon as that happens, you need to cast Revive Pet ASAP, because your pet just does so much damage. Uh, I would say, in some cases, more than the hunter itself. That That's obviously variable, but you know how it is. So, group, pretty frustrating here. This is probably going to take a really long time, so I might be cutting some stuff out, I don't know. It's not always fun to upload 40 minute videos, but at the same time, um, like I said, there isn't a whole lot of Hunter stuff on the channel, so even though I'm mega undergeared, I still know what I'm talking about. Like I said, I, I raided quite a bit as a Hunter back in the day, and I did quite a bit of PvP as well, so uh, you'll be learning some stuff about the class just by watching these, but they may not be as entertaining as I would like just because of the nature random dungeons and all that. What is going on with these geists? Uh. Okay, you see that macro in action, guys. I have a macro that sends my pet to attack my selected target simultaneously while casting Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark, I don't think the numbers are even uh, definitive in Cataclysm anymore. They used to be, but I would imagine they're somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 attack power bonus attack power on your target. Oh, never mind. It is... It is definitive. It's 1772. That's almost 1800 attack power you have on your target with Hunter's Mark. I think it's even higher than that on uh, Marksmanship. Boy, I was way off. <laughs> Where did I get 400 from? Whoops. So, pet taking some damage there. That was kind of my fault, but the tank really... Both of these tanks that have been in this group are frustrating the hell out of me. Uh, anyways, guys. And if you want to see some PvP on, on my Hunter, I'm definitely down to do that. I'd probably do some marksmanship. I'm not a real fan of survival. I feel like... I don't know. It's, I'm just not a fan of survival. So uh, if I do do PvP on this character, it will be marksmanship most likely. Uh... But that'll take some time because I gotta gear him up and I, I really dislike doing Battlegrounds with zero resilience or low resilience for that matter. The tank's about to die. I might as well get out my damn Rhino here because my pet's taking a ton of aggro and the tank is gonna die again, so. By the way, Tenacity pets as a Beastmaster Hunter are very, very robust. They can take damage like a tank. So, uh, yeah, this dungeon, Shadowfang Keep, is a remake. Uh oh. It's a remake of an old vanilla dungeon, and I believe, well, no, it was Alliance and Horde. But I never really played it, because I don't, I didn't do dungeons at this low of a level. I think this is like level 20 or so. So when I first came in here in Cataclysm, it was like my first time in here, like, what the hell is this place? And they were like, are you serious? Uh, it's it's certainly one of my least favorite instances in Cataclysm, hands down. Just because it's so small and all you got all these corridors and everything. It's in that that last fight we just did is my I really hate that fight. I was trying to heal it and I was like, what the hell is going on here? Because everyone's going down to one percent HP, and uh, I didn't understand the fight mechanics. So yeah, Shadowfang keep not my favorite. Nowhere is this tank, but we're just going to get through it. I'm going to stop complaining and start killing some stuff. I'll start focusing on my rotation uh, for, for reals this time. I think on the boss I did about uh, just under 11,000 DPS single target. And that was while screwing up 
But keep in mind, guys, I don't even have a helmet with a metagem. Metagems make a world of difference. That 3% crit damage really, really adds up. Especially if you're an agility-based class, such as the Hunter. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can get an idea of what the damage would be like if I was actually geared properly. And I will put some stuff up when I am. Uh, but as of right now, it's doing about 12,000 single point damage. That's with uh, two kill shots in there. Actually, that's very impressive, I must say. How's that even possible? That's higher than my mage does single point. What the heck? I guess Fortigern is just a beast. Fortigern is the name of my pet. If you're, if you watch my channel, holy cow. If you watch my channel, uh, I introduce you to him. But he's he's a major BA. We don't mess around with him. He's a he's actually a student of Hengist Catform. Same uh, old character model and all that. So if you're if you're on the horde team and you encounter Fortigern, you should probably just feign death or actually die because uh, he'll just tear you a new one. His favorite cat food is Friskies, by the way, if you're wondering. Sometimes, uh, those are random drops. You can pick them up and it increases his happiness to like 150%. <laughs> that was a joke. But anyways, guys, uh, by watching this, you'll get an idea of uh, my hunter playstyle, my hunter background, and just how bummed easy I am as a hunter. So that when we do our leveling series with Curtis, uh, you understand. And he's probably watching this right now. So, Curtis, if you're watching, man, this is what you're going to turn into doing 12,000 single point damage in terrible gear by being Hengus Apprentice. JK. I'm not really full of myself, guys. I'm just, I guess, in that kind of mood. Maybe I'm just frustrated at this tank. What the hell? Where did all these people come from? One thing that a lot of people don't use enough is the explosive trap. If you've been playing Hunter, you know that multi-shot is essentially worthless in uh, any any scenario. And that is a fact because in patch 4.1, Blizzard's like, okay, we know, we know multi-shot is worthless. We're going to go ahead and boost its damage by 400%. Which, I don't even know if that's going to be enough to justify the cost of 40 uh, focus. Maybe as a marksman, but not as a beastmaster. So what? why I was bringing that up is... Um, explosive shot is great AoE. Especially since they took away Volley. Which, by the way, for a long time was the strongest AoE ability as a marksman. Uh, explosive shot is basic... Or, did I say explosive shot? Have I been saying explosive shot? I mean explosive trap. This one right here. Uh, it does, it's essentially the same as a flame strike, as a fire mage. It does instant damage and then it does damage over time in an area of effect. So, it's certainly stronger than, uh, than a multi-shot. And you can trap launch it like that, which is awesome. I love the trap launcher. That's another thing that drew me back to the class, is being able to shoot traps. Anyways, uh, there's a bunch of whining going on in this group. This is why I cover up my chat box. So you guys can't see me getting all pissed off at these guys. <laughs> Just kidding. I cover up my chat box because I got real ID friends and, and such that uh, log in and write stuff and I don't want to be displaying their names. <sighs> I re Too much waiting around, guys. Let's go. So I think he said he was pulling him out here. Yeah, he's going to pull him right into my traps. Look at that. That was like Vietnam right there. All those landmines. Yes. Snake Trap as well, guys. Snake Trap does um, a solid poison DOT. It's not. It doesn't justify using it as a cooldown on a boss. But it's certainly underused in PvP. I think this tank has really horrible mitigation. He's wearing three-piece PvP set. And he seems to be stacking stamina, mostly. He has one dodge gem. The rest is strength. Yeah, he's a piece of prot PvP uh, class with a tanking spec. Pretty frustrating. 
Here comes the explosive trap right there. Just drop it right in there like that. Just takes one global, and you can get right back into the action. But other than that, guys, Beastmasters don't really have AoE. Uh, the explosive trap is much stronger as a survival hunter, and the multi shot is much stronger as uh, as a marksman. But the Beastmaster doesn't really have a, a, a comparable AoE attack. Now you can you can use a pet that has an AoE ability. I have a Chimera that does a pretty awesome AoE ability, to be honest, but it doesn't justify losing the static damage over time uh, output that the pet does. But it, it, in certain situations, the AoE attack will do more damage than the pet's single point, but uh, overall, it's not a wise decision to be using your pet for AoE. But that is an option that's available. I would like to see Blizzard buff that, actually. Uh, I would show you, but we're about to do a boss. I'll do it after we kill this boss. I'll show you some of the Chimera AoE. Oh no, my bow is yellow. That's bad news. How close is it? Three durability on my bow. That is terrible. That's what happens when you die too much. By the way, what does an elf have to do these days? Oops. See, that's why hunters get blamed for being huntards often, is because of the auto shot mechanics. No, don't die. That's about to die again. The auto shot mechanics are automatic, so if you accidentally tab a target, he's gonna. that, that is not part of the, your pole, is automatically gonna shoot that guy. And that's something that nobody really understands unless they play a hunter, because they're the only class in the game that has an auto attack that is ranged. So it, you don't have to be in melee range to auto attack somebody as a hunter. And that's why there's so many mistakes uh, hunter pulls. And even I'm guilty of it. I just pulled one right there. But that's why we have abilities like feign death and such, right? After this boss, I'm gonna repair my bow. Or actually, I'll ask for jeeps. So once again, I'm really not focusing on my damage, but for this boss, I'm going to unload on him, and it's going to be sweet. No one has a Jeeves. No luck. Okay, here goes. Hunters do have uh, heroism. I don't even have it on my bars. I believe it would be marksmanship, right? What do they call that ability? It's like focus something. Maybe they don't? I swear hunters have heroism. I probably haven't trained it yet, being the noob that I am. Do they really don't have heroism? Maybe they were planning on it again, they didn't. I don't know, I haven't been keeping up. Anyways, don't eat it. We're gonna blow him up anyways, here we go. Pardon me if I don't go over the rotation. I actually do want to see an accurate sample of the damage. We're about 12 right now. Ah, oh, Serpent's thing just dropped. Amateur! I've been tuning about 12,000. Um, that was with cooldowns. That was awesome, by the way. If you consider how bad my character's gear is, there's an ad here. Uh, that amount of damage is actually really impressive. And I'm not saying that because I'm trying to boast. I'm actually examining it from a mathematical standpoint. It seems like the spec here is overpowered from the looks of things. If I'm able to do that amount of damage in greens, either that or the hunters I've seen are just flat out underperforming. Because I have been out DPS by hunters in Cataclysm frequently. Uh, and I can see why. I was talking about earlier that the Beast Mastery spec takes very little skill. It does take a fair amount of concentration, but in terms of uh, actual skill, not so much. And it's just doing a ton of damage. Did I just get disarmed? Oh, my bow died. Awesome. Okay, time to melee the boss. How about that? We're gonna Raptor Strike here, non-stop. 
What happened to Mongoose Bite? What the heck? Yeah, look at that DPS. This is really lame. I was doing some really solid damage and my bow dies. Looks like the healer's gonna die here. He's out of mana. Cool. It's funny, you can still maintain about 6,000 DPS like this. gonna go repair my stuff. So guys, um, in the comments below, if you want to see some more hunter stuff, let me know. But uh, people have been messaging me, Hengus make more videos, Hengus make more videos. I don't have all the time in the world, guys, so Give me a hierarchy of what you want to see uh, from me. Like You can ask me to focus on hunter stuff, or mage stuff, or druid stuff, or even warrior stuff. But we have enough warriors on TGN, I must say. So forget what I said about the warrior stuff. <laughs> I will be putting a fair amount of time into the leveling series for with Curtis because uh, there's just um, a lot of people that watch the channel that are have never had a level cap tune so I, th I think it's kind of a new revelation for me it's going to be important for me to keep up with that so that's something i do want to commit to but other than that guys uh let's focus on those three classes for now in terms of what you want to see from hengus and in the meantime we will wait for this leggy tank to get his business sorted out and pull this next boss come on let's go come on Uh, we're gonna clog up the YouTubes with this long ass video, man. Let's speed it up. Oh yeah, make sure you drink your potion so that we all see uh, that your flip out transformed into a human ninja type character, because that makes you a lot better player. God, I'm wasting my time. I'm gonna stand here. My name is. My name is Arkstar of, of Rabid, Rabid Pink Bunnies. Do you like my guild name? <laughs> Watch this. I'm going to misdirect and get kicked from the group. Just kidding. I almost did, though. Uh, just launched an explosive shot up there. Bam. Mm, look at those kill command crits. When the pet is in bestial wrath, by the way, a ferocity pet, hands down, don't ever use anything but a ferocity pet in a dungeon. Uh, but when I use the kill command during the bestial wrath, it's critting around 30k. You can only imagine what those numbers will look like. Even when I get a freaking helmet, you know, how much difference that'll make. So, yeah, I'm interested to see, guys, exactly the full potential of DPS, because right now, I haven't been paying attention at all, but it seems to me like they're at the top of the top of the charts. What the heck? They're just doing so much damage. Oh yeah, and I'm using this gun that I've had since I was like level 82. It's level 318. Imagine when I get a new helmet and a new ranged weapon. How much more damage I'll be doing. Well, pressing... Well, okay, so the order the hunter has in terms of the rotation. As a Beastmaster, your priority is um, kill shot, kill command, keeping your serpent sting up, and burning your focus with arcane shot while rebuilding it with with cobra shot. That's really the whole extent of the rotation. It's really not all that complicated. So when you consider how much damage they do when compared to a class like a feral druid, where you have to be constantly focusing on your damage, it doesn't seem right to me. I think there needs to be some things done to the class to make it a little more interesting. 
And that is exclusively PV, P PvE I'm talking about here, guys. Hunter PvP takes a lot of skill, to be honest with you. So don't discriminate against hunters in a battleground or an arena or anything like that. In fact, they're actually not all that uh, potent in arenas lately. Because they're pretty easy to line of sight and get in the melee range, especially in small arenas. But you know what? Whoever thought arenas were balanced in the first place really needs to re-examine their understanding of the game, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I hope my game sound isn't too quiet. I can always boost it up. But yes, we need to speed things up here. This tank is really starting to frustrate me. In fact, I would like to skip this boss just because it's taking so long. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, the, uh, there is actually a proc called Focus Fire. The details of it are kind of complex, unless you understand the class. Uh, I won't talk about how it works yet, but it is a 15% haste boost you get. Um, <clears throat> and you do need to make sure that you're on top of that at all times as well, so that does complicate the rotation more than I gave credit for. Looks like we are not going to be skipping this boss, and let's get an accurate representation of what my damage is like on this one, shall we? Come on, you can do it, Arkstar. I know you're a little slow, man, but let's get this show on the road now. Quit throwing costumes at people. Okay, so we're gonna focus this mod. One cool thing about being a hunter is if you know that a unit is going to die before you can get off a Cobra shot or uh, even a global, you can switch targets beforehand and have your pet finish that target off. Oh, I did not see this ad here. I thought I had already killed him. Okay, now we're going to start doing some damage here. Let's use my rapid fire. Haste is through the roof at the moment. By the way, if you didn't know, haste regenerates focus, so it is very, very valuable for hunters, especially beastmasters, these days. And so when you use abilities like rapid fire, uh, I would say that the life bloom, prof er, the herbalism profession, because of life bloom, which I just used, by the way, is probably the best profession you can have for a hunter because it boosts your haste rating by 480 for, uh, I believe, 15 or 20 seconds. So that is a very potent ability. Uh, same can be said for a mage, even. It's just super good, that the life bloom, or life blood bonus from the herbalism profession. Now, we're gonna wipe here, and I believe I'm gonna leave this group, because not only is this video just way too long for my liking, so, well, it's not way too long yet, but it will be. Um, I don't want to finish this dungeon group with this group here. So, uh, we will die here because there's just too many ads. I haven't been doing my job. I was just trying to get a representation of the damage. I haven't been doing my job in terms of switching. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll beat up on a level 85 dummy and then we'll close off this episode because we're just not getting anywhere with this group. Okay, where did he come from? Did he run through the instance these days? So yeah, I've I've had quite enough of that. This is an example of why I don't do raiding uh, or dungeons, really. It's just, oh man, those kinds of players. And I don't mean to be putting anybody down, honestly, man. It's just that I'm not willing to dedicate an hour and a half of my time to wiping on a dungeon, okay? It's just not my style. So let's uh, let's go ahead and practice on the dummy. I'll show you guys about two minutes. That's two rotations of the bestial wrath on a level 85 dummy, so you can get an idea of 
um, playing as a beast, master, hunter, and what damage is like at a low gear level. I'm average item level 330, and I'm wearing all PvE gear, so... Let's see, I'm not going to attack a, a raid boss dummy because my hit rating is not there and it's just not going to be accurate. So here we go. Let's do this. Oh, you know what? My rapid fire and uh, additional cooldowns are off are on cooldown right now, so it won't be as high as I would like. But let us get an idea. Anyways. Hmm. Certainly not as high as it was with those buffs. Oh, pfft. I'm not using Aspect of the Hawk again. God, you're such a new Vangus. That's 2,000 attack power, not 2,600 attack power, which is huge. It's going to affect your numbers like crazy if you don't have Aspect of the Hawk up. So that is Hunter 101. No, that's Hunter 098, guys. If you don't use Aspect of the Hawk, uh, whenever you're standing still, you need to go back to noob school. And we will be starting that up soon, I hope. I could learn something from noob school aspect of the hawk. My goodness. So uh, that representation is very bad because I didn't have aspect of the hawk up when I used bestial wrath and my other cooldowns. So uh, you saw against the other bosses, I was maintaining about 12,000. I imagine that's where it would be if I was actually not being a complete amateur today. Um, so yeah when i get more gear i'll do another one of these and you guys let me know what you want to see in the comments below i'll be sure to to try to make sure we do that and for those of you adamant followers of my channel uh i realize you may be upset because i'm not doing a lot of feral stuff but you know we're trying to make tgn the best place for educational warcraft videos and i want to be a part of it so that's what this is all about can't stick to one character if you want to change the community so Sorry, but uh, that's where we're going with this. And of course, Hengus is still my main, guys. In fact, I'm going to do some feral stuff either today or tomorrow and put it up on my channel. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.